Hi, I'm Shane Phillips, the CEO of the Phillips Group, and I'm here at the HR Summit and Expo, the number one HR event in the Middle East, and I'm here with Dr. Michael Platt, who's one of the world's leading neuroscientists and a professor at the Wharton Business School. Welcome, Dr. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So you were just talking, I mean, there's so many areas that this applies to, but you said one of the areas where we can actually see concrete results um, is in marketing. Absolutely. So uh, marketing was really the first area that neuroscience began to get a foothold in the last decade, and this has really come on in the last three, four, or five years. Um, marketing is uh, an area where we can demonstrate that if I collect a little bit of biological data from you, um, could be brain waves, could be where you're looking, could be micro expressions on your face, I can combine that data across a small group of individuals and actually predict the effectiveness of that, of an advertisement of any sort um, at the market level. So actually predict ticket sales at the movies or um, sales of DVDs or uh, click-throughs to websites or viewership of particular right. uh, you know, television shows. And what's really remarkable about that is you can take it another step further. So what happens to that brainwave, like if you were having that equipment on, on my brain, yeah. uh, what will we see when you say, okay, this ad is definitely triggering Shane, what kind of, what kind of activity are you, are you seeing? Right, well, it depends on what technology we would use, but the kinds of um, signals that, we, that would be most informative to us reflect a few things. One is attention. So did the ad grab your attention, and did it grab your attention in the way that the, the creator uh, intended it to, right? Um, so that's one thing. And we know that things that you pay attention to get access to your brain in a privileged way. So they're more likely to be remembered, more likely to affect your later decisions. So we look for attention, we look for emotion. So are you having an emotional response and hopefully a positive emotional response? And then we might look for something like memory. Is that actually getting encoded into memory, which means it could affect your decisions uh, later on. So those um, processes we can measure with greater or less precision with different kinds of technologies that go from being very cumbersome, like lying in an MRI machine, a brain scanner, uh, to having a, you know, a camera focused on your face that allows us to pick up on where you're looking and how big your pupils are. Right, right. And um, what are the, some of the other areas outside of marketing which you find are very impactful yeah, I think, um, well, I think HR is probably one of the most important and where ultimately we'll see the biggest impact. So think of it uh, basically as kind of two, there's two major um, components to HR. One is uh, assessment and selection, so, and where neuroscience can help us to provide a much more robust, precise, scientific understanding of who people are in terms of their talents, their traits, and motivators which can help us align their, uh, the job they do with really who they are. Instead of just asking them questions, giving them personality tests and IQ tests, which are flawed in a variety of ways. So that's one area. And the other, which I think is even potentially more impactful, is in um, team dynamics, team chemistry, collaboration, where we, there are signals that we can measure which can help us to identify who will work well together, who will have chemistry, uh, ongoing, um, changes in the dynamics between individuals and ultimately what we can do with that is to put the right people together on teams so we have the, the, the most desirable outcomes and when we do that I think employees are going to be happier also so this will contribute to well-being uh, that will lower turnover right so and then companies will spend a lot less money on uh, recruiting training etc so I think that's one where it's a win-win for the company bottom line and for employees' uh, happiness and well-being. So moving forward as part of our executive development, will we be getting brain scanned like a couple times a year? <laughs> and they'll be like, Shane, your brain waves are just not there yet. Are we, <laughs> well, <laughs> are I think be what part we'll, of the well, what, what's going to, What you're going to see emerging is actually wearable devices. I mean, we've actually developed our own in-house. That's very high, uh, high signal quality, high fidelity. Um, but unobtrusive and comfortable to wear. And that gives us a first step at kind of some continuous monitoring of brain activity. I mean, ultimately, brain scans are still expensive, uh, time-consuming, and cumbersome, but ultimately, they may become quite, you know, I think it could scale 
uh, eventually. And if, if you're making a decision about something that is monumental for a company, like a CEO, uh, yeah, you might want to make the investment in getting brain scans on all your candidates to understand something about their leadership potential, uh, their moral psychology, because we now know that there are actually even structural differences in the brains of MBA students who have different le achieved different levels of moral reasoning. So this is quite um, remarkable. And Physically, their brains are different? Or different. Yeah. The like, so what's the difference? There's differences in the, the connections between an area of the brain that basically regulates emotional processes. And we also see that um, uh, that also characterizes differences between people and their tolerance for risk, for example, as well. So it's not just kind of what's lighting up and how much, but what's lighting up and how much is, all, is a result ultimately of the structure of the brain. So, uh, so you, our brains could look quite different. Um, some of that's kind of built in when you're born, but some of that reflects uh, what you've learned and the kinds of things that you give your brain to chew on during the day. Wow, so the future of executive assessment here will be brain scan will be, will be part of it. Uh, I'm not going to say will, but I'd like to see it be part of it. I mean, and I have no financial interest in that at all. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously. Is that sarcasm? I, no, seriously. It's, um, no, I think the more robust, you know, why, why don't we take the guesswork out of it? Why do we, why not move it from an art to a science? Right. Very interesting. So thank you so much, it's Doctor. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Great being here. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Michael Platt, one of the leading neuroscientists in the world, giving you some of the insights of what's happening upstairs with your noggin. Uh, he's also a professor of Warren School of Business, and I'm your host, Shane Phillips, the CEO of the Phillips Group, and we're here at the HR Summit and Expo, the number one HR event in the Middle East.